Hello and welcome to Effective Business Requirements Unlock Program Success. Are you about to embark on a transformation program, whether that's finance, procurement, HR, or IT? Then you need BizRec. BizRec is the new service line offering from Finance Transformation Consulting. And we are here in order to help you to derive effective business requirements. My name is Michael Ryan, and I'm joined by my colleague, Mark Sewell. And today we're going to explain the new service line that we launched yesterday. Check it out on www.bizrec.com. Mark, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. My name is Mark Saywell. I've been a business transformation consultant for around about 25 years. A uh, lot of background focus on technology projects, but also involved in facilitating my clients towards the best performance possible with business transformation around process and people as well as technology. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, you and I got together some time ago in order to consider what would be a solution which was applicable right across the program transformation space, not just confined to finance transformation. And when we were discussing it, we were hit by the comments made by one of our other colleagues last year, Mark Vincent, at one of our um, conferences, that according to the Oxford Business School, more than 95% of major change programs are delivered late or over budget. And we sat down to consider this. We were, we were amazed. And then we looked back on our own experience and we thought, what was it that could influence that to the greatest extent? What was it that could actually prevent that? And we came to the conclusion that actually it comes right at the start in defining effective business requirements. And if you wanted to do that, Mark, where would you start? Well, I think it's the, uh, the philosopher Henry David Thoreau once said, you know, build your castles in the sky. But that's where they belong. Now put your foundations underneath them. And I think that's where part of the challenge comes. So in order to build a successful project, you need strong foundations. The number of mm -hmm. projects that I've been involved in in the past where you get a decent way into the project and then something critical comes up that causes significant overrun, significant additional cost because it hadn't been considered up front. So I think one of the fundamentals you need in any project you know, you, you need the strong foundations first and business requirements are a strong foundation of any project, essentially defining what the exam question is that you need to answer. And it's vital in, in producing a project that, you know, your exam question is clear and specific to your organisation, that it's considered, that it really does spell out what you need in order to be successful as a business organisation, what dimensions you need to fulfil during your business project. Okay, so it sounds like that what's required is a, a thorough review of the business itself, which is in itself um, an inward looking exercise in order to get to the heart of the problem. Where would you say that external consultancies such as finance transformation consulting bring uh, advantages or benefits to bear as opposed to this exercise being done by internal resources? I think it's a few things there. So I think first and foremost, when you ask a lot of organizations to just go about considering what they do as an organisation themselves, they can get a little bit too inward. Um, they can start talking within business language that is unique to the organisation, not considering the bigger picture, translatable understanding that, um, uh, that, that a third party can actually understand. So you need to kind of avoid that uh, business specific language. You, you need to make sure that there are components that are absolutely unique to the business that are brought to the fore. But often having an external party who has done this kind of exercise repeatedly for multiple different organisations in different industry sectors, they understand the kind of questions and they understand how to prompt the kind of thought from a business organisation that may be um, the adage, you know, sometimes you can be too close, too close to the trees to see the wood. Mm -hmm. um, but having somebody who can actually come in and help you pull back a little bit, understand the bigger picture of what you're looking at, challenge you with some specific questions that maybe you're, you're thinking too inwardly about your organisation that you don't actually see and understand how they can impact on your project scope. You can need that, that external view to come in and help you get to the right answer, but also probably ask you some questions that you hadn't thought were relevant to your project scope. Um, right. that, that, you know, by having those questions asked at the right point in the, point in the project, can set you up for greater success and make sure you don't get any unexpected surprises down the line during the delivery of your project. Right. So it sounds like the internal team will always, always know the business best. 
and we would need to work hand in glove with them in order to succeed with BizRec. Um, but actually, it's that external view where you've looked across multiple projects, you've looked across multiple programs, different sectors, different industries, etc. That means that you know the right questions to ask. So is there almost like an accelerated process here as a result of knowing the right questions to ask? I, I think there is, yeah. I think when you've done the exercise numerous times in numerous different organisations, you can start to understand the key areas where maybe maybe um, maybe businesses that aren't really adept at performing their own transformation are likely to miss in consideration. Um, if I can call on an example, so I, I've, I've done a lot of system implementations and um, quite regularly when I go into a system selection exercise, for an example, with, with a client, um, they're looking to try and save time. And so you can often be met with, with a requirement that comes out that's, well, we just want our processes to be done to best business practice. Mm -hmm. best, best business practice is a, a very wide um, comment, a very wide position to, to try and take forward from. There are multiple flavors of best practice and you need to make sure that they are uh, refined for your organization in particular. And you know, no, no organization does the same process exactly the same way. There will be various variables that are business specific in terms of how you manage data, potential regulatory statutory data that you need that other businesses don't have to use. There could be various other parts about how your business operates, whether in terms of subsidiary structure, governance structure, um, whether in terms of the technology platform that you operate and work within that needs to be considered up front when you're scoping your project out. And simply giving a throwaway comment of well, we want best practice doesn't allow you to refine the answer to give yourself the best chance of the right answer for your for your project solution. Um, most service providers will provide a solution that is geared to best practice but you need to understand what best practice is for your organization. And mm. having a third party consultant that understands, well, number, one, number one understands what best practice is, but number two understands how you need to customize that best practice to deliver the specific wants and requirements of the organization in question can be an absolute must. Otherwise you can give yourself some significant headaches in the delivery of your project. Okay, very interesting, very interesting. Um, so one of the other things that I was curious about as we were building BizRec, I'm a finance transformation specialist and, and you're an IT transformation specialist who strays into the finance space. But in, in essence, the approach that we've created, is it not functional agnostic? Absolutely. I think part of the key of, of being functionally agnostic is if you go in and try and build to an exam answer, you can forget fundamental parts of the exam question. So mm. you need to spend that time up front planning out and understanding your specific needs, defining the exam question in an agnostic manner so that you don't try and preempt or you don't try and get to an outcome that actually may not serve you as best as you need. So, mm -hmm. it, again, we live in a fast moving world. Many organisations can be encouraged to jump straight to that answer and try and move themselves towards the answer. But there's dangers in doing that. If you omit a fundamental part of your business organization when defining the exam question, it will bite you when it comes when it ultimately comes up. And if you if you've engaged with a service provider, um, mm -hmm. you're, you're a way down the line of, of delivering your project, and then all of a sudden that fundamental item jumps out at you, it's going to cause you some considerable time in terms of cost, in terms of potentially changing your project structure to accommodate that item. So absolutely you need to go into these projects clear of the the bias of an end outcome clear of the bias of of a particular um answer um mm -hmm. to that question and make sure that you put the time to 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 clearly spell out what your exam question is and then go and find the right answer to that question okay so there's two very good points in what you said there i just touch upon one of them first of all one of the approaches within BizRec is the due diligence side where we actually go and we talk to senior stakeholders outside of the particular function that the business requirements are being developed for. Because there's, there's business bias, there's function bias, but at the end of the day, all solutions are defined with the end goal, with the end customer in mind. How important do you believe it is to ensure that your consultants are not in essence led by the person who requested the project? 
and that we get outside of that and talk to other other members within the C-suite. Well, well, again, when when you deal with a specific stakeholder, a single specific stakeholder in a project environment, there can be innate bias. And I think it's always important, especially on a large scale, you know, a business investment project that could cost hundreds of thousands, could cost millions, depending on the size of the organisation. It's always worth having that, those extra viewpoints thrown into the mix. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned yourself, in terms of a, you know, a finance project, you could have a uh, maybe a large group of companies that's looking to set up establish a shared service centre. Um, so it, it could well be, say, the group CFO, who is the, the individual who wants to go down a particular route, standardise a particular process. And let's just say for argument's sake, the procurement is, is the angle we go down. Well, it, it absolutely makes sense to have a consolidated back office function that, that, that governs procurement and potentially governs the account, accounts payable within a group structure. But you do still need to be aware of the wants of the stakeholders if you're a group of companies and you've got subsidiaries who have maybe specific business fundamental needs within their procurement or payables process where they're obligated to use certain regulated platforms if they're working with governments for example if there's mm -hmm. particular trade applications that are fundamental to their procurement solution it doesn't necessarily mean that they can't be incorporated in a general um, consolidated process that's common across the organization but you need to make sure the consideration is given to pick it up and make sure that variance of that process is accommodated in a shared service scenario uh, and again if you get too involved on the wants of one particular individual those specific requirements from that that you know very important business variation can be omitted. So it's important to get that understanding of those up front. Okay. So it's clear that really that that what you know finance transformation consulting bring to this from many projects is the ability to challenge not just the project sponsor within finance as an example, but also to challenge the C-suite members, their actual peers in other functions. One of the other things that you alluded to there um, in your previous answer was the contractual impact of not ensuring that you have effective business requirements because we deal in large scale change programs. There will be a people aspect to it, the organizational design, the operating model. There will be an ERP aspect to it in practically every case. And in addition to an ERP, there'll be occasionally be point solutions. So a business starts to look at several service providers. How important or how critical are the business requirements in driving contract negotiations? Oh, again, incredibly. If if you in, in most project situations, you're going to be running one of two models, aren't you? You're going to be running time and material, or you're going to be running fixed cost. Now, if you don't have a mature set of business requirements at the time of establishing a fixed cost project, you're going to get down the line. That requirement is still going to be a fundamental need when you get at some point potentially quite deep into the project potentially post-build, potentially in testing, it's going to become very evident that that requirement hasn't been met and you're going to need to have it delivered. Well, outside of the fixed contract negotiation, you're going to be faced with a, a supplemental day rate to deliver any additional changes that mm -hmm. um, can be quite expensive compared to the, uh, the initial consolidated scoping cost. So financially, it's going to lead to some considerable implications on your outlay in order to then facilitate that requirement that you missed out. There could be some broader implications from it as well. I mean, if it's a if it's a major data requirement that leads to, you know, fundamental change in how processes link together, you could mm -hmm. be impacted more than just the process in question. So there can actually be significant knock-ons throughout the entire project into different process areas that haven't been considered. So, you know, sometimes the costs can, can escalate quite exponentially based on a missed requirement later in the project from a cost perspective, but also from a time perspective, it can lead to those overruns. Um, even from the perspective, if you're running on a time and material basis, then therefore it means that you know, okay, you, you're committed to paying for time that's spent by that service provider, but if you haven't got the early sight of the solution that you're after, the, the early sight of the, the 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 requirement that you need to meet, it's those broader implications as 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 your your answer expands beyond the original scope that can lead to further costs that even on a time and materials basis is undesirable to the overall package cost of the program that you're looking to deliver. Okay, so is there clear implications clear down the line on some great advantages that BizRec brings to the equation? Uh, you would almost say actually that if you've done this often enough, the solution is repeatable, the approach is repeatable, 
the experience that's brought to bear is repeatable. So one of the key advantages of BizRec is that it is offered at an actual flat fee. How much do you think the experience in doing this over and over again contributes to that? Oh, repeatability. It's like with everything. The more you do something, the better you get at it. Um, there are always common questions as you're scoping out any kind of project. There's, there's always multiple dimensions of delivery on every project you need to consider. So, you, you know, you're considering the people angles, you're considering the technology angles, you're considering the organisation itself, the implications of the organisation itself. The more you do those kind of exercises, the more you learn from those exercises. And, you know, without sounding too arrogant here, Michael, you and I have done these exercises plenty of times. And so certainly when it comes to working with organisations who maybe have even done it once or twice, that, that opportunity to have knowledgeable second opinion, second thought, um, or, or maybe even just a tried and tested methodology that, that you know, supersedes the, the have a go hero approach that's maybe been done inter internally before can be priceless. Yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter what you're doing, you know, whether it be a business project, whether it be a, a, an exercise within a business, whether it be sport, whether it, no matter what it is, the more you do it, the better you get. Um, and when you're leveraging expertise, it's the fact that it's been done on a repeatable basis, that it's been honed and refined to a provable, repeatable structure. Um, that, that, that that's close to priceless when it comes to supporting this setup of a project. Yeah, uh, and I would agree. I've done this ex across, exercise across uh, several different types of business in size and shape, but done them simultaneously. What I found was that it was invaluable. I could have been looking at something for the four billion turnover food company and looking at something for the two hundred million university, two hundred million turnover university. And actually, I was picking up learnings in both. So they were benefiting from the fact that actually I had performed this exercise on multiple occasions and the learnings were being shared. This type of uh, exposure that we get and are able to bring to clients far exceeds what an internal team would be capable of doing. Um, You've hit on a really good point there as well, Michael. So. Um, when it comes to the actual methodology of running a, a fundamental step in a project like this, um, I am aware of a number of organisations who, again, they can get really hung up on industry specifics or, again, solution mm. specifics. Um, when it comes to running a project successfully, the, the knowledge of the specific industry, the knowledge of the specific business, that's going to be provided by the internal experts. That's, that's great. You don't mm. necessarily need your external consultant to come in with the industry specific knowledge when it comes to a transferable skill set. You want them mm. to come in with the knowledge of how to do the exercise effectively and to ask the yeah. questions cor uh, correctly. So bringing in, let's say you work in the insurance business. Insurance is a, is a classic area where you see like a job, job specification. They're always asking for insurance industry specific requirements. Again, they're missing out on a trick there. By having somebody that comes in with a di with different or multiple industry views, they're going to be asking questions that the industry specific knowledge can come from the in-house people. But the understanding of the repeatable business project processing, that comes from the expert. And there's kind of key buckets, dri drivers and accelerators that regardless of whether you're in a manufacturing business, insurance business, the driving questions are always the same. You can ask about regulatory requirements. You can ask about statutory requirements. You can ask about the regulatory reporting requirements. You can ask about specific data terms. You don't need to know the industry in and out to ask those right questions because mm. you've got that in-house knowledge that can answer those questions. You just need to make sure that you're considering all the necessary questions. Mm. So very, very much BizRec, um build on our experience between the pair of us over the last 20 years. And it's agnostic. It's agnostic of sector. It's agnostic of ERP system. And it goes far as to say it's agnostic of back office function. The same Absolutely. approach is applied regardless of function. Absolutely. Yeah. OK. Well, I think we've covered all the bases. And the, the basic premise about what we set out to um, talk about today was do you really seriously want to be part of the 95% of projects that are delivered late or over budget? No, you don't. If you're starting your transformation program today and you're a little unsure as to how to get it started and what's the single most important deliverable you need to work on, then reach out to Finance Transformation Consulting today. And we will bring in the BizRec solution. We'll sit down with you 
and we will work through it, as I said, uh, for a flat fee. So when you're ready to start your transformation program and get it off on the right foot, look up BizRec today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you.